Hi, and welcome to another edition of Hand Laid Tracks and 3D Printed Trains with Socrates. Today we're taking a look at building out a number four turnout. Now I built the number six turnouts using the number six three-way jig because that's essentially a left hand and a right hand number six turnout connected with the straight. You can also make a number four Y, which I haven't done yet, but I will eventually. And of course the number six three-way. But today I'm just building a number four turnout using the fast tracks jigs. But unlike the original ones, which I did using blue tech, I made my own jigs for it. What I did different with this is I, I'm using the fast tracks jig for the entire turnout, but I built my own support that goes around the jig that holds my own clamping system. Because if you see the early videos, I was using blue tack, that sticky stuff, which worked, but it was really difficult to get off and I did not find it to be a great system. With this, I can use my simple clamps and with three clamps, holds the entire turnout in place and it doesn't block any of these solder ties. It's a fairly straightforward procedure, the same as the other turnouts. First is to cut your guard rails and then bend into shape. But what I'm doing differently is I have a rail cutter that cuts all the rails at the same time. So it has a slot for the, the long rails and the diverging rails and the guard rails and the frog rails. And you can cut them all at once and it saves a little bit of time and it makes sure that all your turnouts will be exactly the same, which is something else I wanted. Now to cut the cross ties, I'm using the long turnout cross ties, but I built my own cross tie cutter that has also a gapper. So they're not in the direct order because I had to line them up with geometry, but you can put all the cross ties in, sand them all to the top, file them to length, and then with the triangle file, gap them all at the same time, and you have a nice clean set of gaps that are in the right place. It's a lot easier than doing them one at a time by hand, and it's just a better quality. So you still have to give it a, the top of each piece a quick shine with the file and make sure they're sort of in the right position of course but it makes the whole process a lot easier I then gave the rails a quick buff on the ends and I'm trying to make them offset and this is one of the first times I'm doing the offset build where I'm using each tie is going to have the rail joiner or there's no there is no rail joiner it's soldered but the joint will be in the middle of a tie and they are one tie apart so I'm making one rail farther than the other and the whole point of getting them together just then was so I could have it properly marked to then cut the small uh, you have to cut the side out for the stock rails the outside rails has to have the small cutout so with the closing rail for the diverging the turnout has a place to go a sort of a little pocket for it to go into so once they're marked in the proper place throw them into the sanding jig or filing jig and bang bang just a few minutes of filing you have the proper cutouts then you make sure they're in the exact right place and then you can go ahead and solder it to those cross ties that we've since properly cut to the length with the cutter and then gapped with a gapping tool and now I only solder the outsides because the wheels have a flange on the inside and I figure I can see the solder coming underneath the rail so there's no point in putting solder on the flange side and at that point you finally get to move a little quicker and you bang through and you can solder all the rails, the outsides all at once. And it feels like you're making some serious progress at this point. The next is the two diverging rails, which again have been cut to a rough length with the rail cutter. And you use the stock or the uh, point tool to again file the proper end into these things because they're going into that pocket. So they're the opposite. And then once you have them filed, you nip a little tiny corner out of it so you can bend the flare so as this goes around the frog and then you kind of file the end of it and you make sure you kind of file a little edge off of it so when the wheel comes into it it's sort of guided into position it's a nice little tiny touch and once you have them both bent also the, the curved rail kind of gives a little hand bending and put them in with the center jig clamp and then I use that little fast tracks three point track gauge to hold things down I hit it with the solder little pressure with the gauge you can actually see the solder squish a little bit do both of the diverging rails and 
now you're almost done. Last is the frog itself goes in, and for the most part I've been pulling them pretty much to the left and you check it with the gapping tool. We have a couple different gauge tools, make sure that they're a nice proper gauge. Soldered in. This has been the hardest solder for some reason. I'm not sure why. This has been the one that has really fought me the most and getting a nice flow in there. I'm not sure what's wrong with this particular spot, but eventually it worked out. And the only left thing after this is the two little guardrails, and they can be a fiddly process. You try to get them laid in the right place, hit it with the solder, and then hold it down with the gapping tool so you have the proper gap into it. And then once the one side's done, the other side pretty much stays in place easily. Do it with the other side again. I'm using the gapping tool to hold it in place. At that point, we're almost done. You take it out, and you have to. I you add these little pieces of paper. It keeps the rails from sticking because now we're going to actually solder the diverging rail to the throw bar so the thing will move. That's why the paper has to keep it from sticking and do both sides. You throw a little piece of cross tie in there to make the right gap and uh, after that solder the back side of the frog to make sure it's nice and uh, strengthened back there. I hit it with a little bit of a file to make sure everything's running clean where there's some uh, garbage in there. And especially where the diverging rails come into the uh, stock rails, I like to file that because you can feel it has a little bit of a bump and the, the trucks will bounce into it. But if you hit it with a file, you can make it nice and smooth and you end up with a really perfect piece of uh, track. And it's, uh, it came out really nice. I was really happy with that. And uh, so far, they're working pretty well. And we're going to continue making some more pieces. And the time saver itself is coming together. And that's another uh, piece done. I have to make the same basic thing uh, for the number sixes. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, make your own trains, play with your trains. Give me a comment if you think I'm doing something right or something wrong. And uh, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.